day grade 10s. In this lesson we're going to be looking at thermal conductors and insulators. Thermal conductors. Some substances conduct heat better than others. Metals are good conductors of heat. What I want to do now is look at a little experiment where they have taken different types Oh, they've got a Bunsen burner connected to this and you'll see that there are different types of metal. There's stainless steel, copper, steel, brass and aluminium. And they have basically connected piece of metal to all of this and there's some wax. Now what should happen, oh there you go, you can see that copper was the best conductor of heat, then aluminium, then brass. Because what's happening is as a conductor heat along, the wax melts and drops off the little pieces of metal. So you can see that copper, then aluminium brass, were then steel, and then finally will obviously be stainless steel. In fact, I wonder, there you go. So from that experiment, we could see that different metals conduct heat better than others. Copper, for example, conducts heat very well, which is why it is often used in geysers. Now let's look at thermal insulators. If substances do not conduct heat, we call them thermal insulators. Non-metals are good thermal insulators. Now let's look at a thermal insulator experiment. This was done by Devon Middle School in America, where they're looking at the difference between an insulator and a conductor. So it says one of these is a good conductor. You can see that we can't tell the difference. They've got basically two pieces of black material and they've got these little rubber rings next to it, I mean on it, and what they're going to do is they're now going to place an ice block on each of these. Now can you see that immediately the one ice block starts melting whereas the other ice block remains the same. Slowly but surely, the one is definitely melting to form water. So what do you think this means? Do you think that the one on the left is a good or bad thermal conductor? Which do you think it is? A good or bad thermal conductor? Wow, it's really melting. Whereas this one is not melting that much that we can see. So have you come to any conclusions yet as to which one you think it's an insulator or a conductor? Remember that insulators do not conduct heat. So therefore the one that allowed it to conduct heat was actually, the one that was allowed it to melt, was actually the conductor because it was letting it conduct the heat from the table. Whereas this was insulating the heat. It didn't allow any thermal energy to pass from the desk to the ice. So we can see that there's a big difference between a thermal conductor and an insulator. Now if we look here we can see that there are different materials that are placed. And the very worst conductor also happens to be the very best insulator. Air is a very, very good insulator, but a very bad conductor of electricity. Whereas diamonds are an incredible, I mean, not electricity, of heat, my bad. Whereas diamonds are a very good conductor of heat, but a very bad insulator. Now, what are our uses? Obviously, if we want to use a pot to cook, we want it to be a good conductor of electricity. But note carefully that we've got these orange handles. And the reason we've got these orange handles is because they are made of plastic. So that is an insulator and we want that to be an insulator so that we can protect our Very cold, if it was originally cold, or very hot. And you'll notice that it actually has very quite a few layers. First of all, it's got a double glass shell, it's got a silver coating and it has a vacuum. And all of that is to prevent it from allowing from heat to transfer either into the flask or out of the flask. Right, thank you grade 10s. I hope that this has been useful.